Hello everyone. My name is Klaus Andersen and I'm Sales Director in Vilofos. Welcome to our webinar part two concerning transition cow management. The first webinar last week identified problems and challenges regarding transition cow management. And today the focus will be on problem solving and solutions. As last week, the presentation will be given by my colleague Per Teilgaard. Per has a background as PhD in animal nutrition and has worked with this area for 15 years. During the webinar, it's possible for you to ask questions. Please do it in the chat and after the presentation, we will answer as many uh, questions as possible. We will also record, record this session and it will be sent to you together with the presentation uh, afterwards, after the, the seminar. And then I will hand over to you, Pierre. And thank you very much for the introduction, Klaus. I hope you all hear me well. Um, uh, yes, this is uh, this, uh, the second talk um, of uh, the transition cow management and um, here today we will go more into the, to the solutions. Just a, a short recap from uh, uh, last week. Um, well, we were very focused on, on the calcium, on the plasma calcium. Um, and uh, calcium around carving is just very, um, very, very, very important. And that's what it's all about here also in this presentation. Um, so low calcium is called uh, hypercalcemia and can be either clinical or subclinical manifested. And we uh, know from uh, from a different report that about uh, 50 to 80 percent of cows in the herd, there will be subclinical manifested. And that is uh, the, the biggest problem we have. Uh, regarding hypercalcemia. We also have some clinical cases, but they might be 1-2% on, 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 on contrary average. Um, yes, we went through uh, some material to see how uh, the, the low calcium, they have a negative impact in disease and, and, and production, reproduction. Um, we could also see that the existing solution uh, have not solved the problem. So also the, the newest uh, report of uh, the frequency of hypercalcemia. They still report these high levels. Um, but the low calcium approach, that's, um, that's it's promising. And um, that is when you uh, have a um, feed, a low level of calcium in, in the dry period. So you do optimize. So, so the cow itself start to uh, uh, absorb the calcium in this period. Um, the only problem is that there is so much calcium in all the feed components uh, that's usually used on the dairy farms. So we are not able to go below the, the limit, which is about 20 gram per, per cow per day. So this uh, theory or approach, it was kind of uh, um, left abandoned for, um, uh, for many years. And then it was taken up again. Um, in around um, the year 2000 by uh, Professor Rolfius Jørgensen from Copenhagen University. So he invented this um, calcium binder. Um, so um, this um, is so this, this is an, an active component which do uh, bind the calcium and indeed also the phosphorus. Uh, you feed it the two three weeks before parturition and um, the cow will then um, um, uh, here actually uh, start mobilizing the calcium. Um, so we can say that she actively have, um, we have activated the cow's own defense mechanism for low calcium. Um, let's go into uh, see um, um, uh, some blood work um, on how it works. Okay, this is from um, from some of the, the earlier studies um, on the calcium binder. It was done uh, by the group of um, of Rolf Jens Jørgensen at Copenhagen University, and here we can uh, we see the the plasma calcium um, around um, uh, parturition. Uh, we can see here the control the control group. 
is uh, the gray color. We can see they have this very usual pattern. They are on about 2.3 uh, here before carving. They're going down to lower than 2, about 2.7 maybe, 2.8, and then they go up again. And a week after, um, after carving, they up again on, on some normal levels. Um, the Excel group, they have been supplemented uh, the Excel in this period, the last two weeks. Um, and supplementing the, the excellent, the calcium binder, um, then the calcium is no longer available for absorption. So the cow need to start absorbing uh, from the bones um, or elsewhere. And you can see that it works very, very good. You can see, see have here um, um, a, a basically a, comp a completely flat line. So here, even even here, she has been supplemented uh, the product for about a week. You can see she can easily get enough uh, calcium uh, from from other sources, and we can see here around carving. Well, she basically just have a flat line. Um, the calves are stop supplementation the product here, and then they've just been on on a normal um, lactational diet here. Um, the product also affect the phosphorus level, uh, and that's what we see on, on this slide. We can see the exhalate uh, take the phosphorus down, so it's lower here before carving, a week before, and it's also lower at carving, and then uh, it will actually come up on, on, on normal or a slightly higher level here a week after. And we know that it's important that uh, the phosphorus is going down here. So if you're taking uh, blood samples to test your values, well, it's uh, you can see here that the value just should be lower than one. If they are here, they're about maybe 2.7. But if you are in the range here below uh, one millimol per liter, that's um, very good. And that's the level where it should be. Um, and the reason I say that it is good to be down there. Uh, well, you can also think, well, why do we not add more dietary phosphorus when to take the phosphorus up? And that's actually what um, has been shown here on, on this figure. Uh, I don't know there's a lot of information here, but we just take it one by one here. So uh, first of all, we have the control group. That's the, the, the triangle with the head down. Um, and we can see you have a high phosphorus level uh, two weeks before calving, one week before calving, at calving, still at the highest level, and then uh, 14 days after calving, they are the same level. And how are these groups calcium levels? That's what we can see here on the right hand side. We can see that they are on the lowest level. And here at calving, you can see that uh, uh, the average, they are low, much lower than two. So they are uh, hypercalcemic, uh, this group. Then we have the next group uh, with the with triangle with a head up. That's on a, let's say a normal uh, phosphorus level here, so point three, and it's been supplemented with the exhalate. Uh, and you can see that that this is the group with the lowest calcium level. Here it's up here about a point six point seven maybe. Uh, still here at calving, it's low. And then at 14 days after, it's up on a normal again. And then we go here to the right side and see, well, how did that uh, work on the calcium level? You can see that that is the, the group here, which at the carving have the highest calcium level. But if you feed high uh, phos level in the diet, what happened then? Then we can see then, um, uh, the phos, uh, yeah, okay, I think at least we changed it here. Uh, if you have a high for uh, um, extra, um, no, 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 it's correct, yeah, okay, we have that here, high phos. Uh, then we have it um, with excellent, we have some intermediate, um, and we can see here on the right hand side that uh, then we have. Um, a dip in 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 the in the calcium calcium levels here. So 
adding more phosphorus dye to the to the ration will not have a good effect. We should stay down on um, on low phosphorus levels. What happened to the magnesium levels? Um, well, on exlit they're basically flat. Uh, they are within um, the normal range, was indicated here. Um, they are lower than the control groups, and usually we see this inverse relationship between the calcium and the magnesium. So when you have a, a lower uh, a calcium level around carving, then you often have a magnesium. Um, so that might probably one of the effect. And then also the, the exlit uh, um, might capture um, a little part of it also. Uh, we are often been asked what is the effect on, on other components and um, especially on the micro elements. Um, so it has been investigated in, 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 um, in different trials. And here uh, we look into the, um, to the sink and we can see that uh, there is no uh, difference in the sink concentration uh, if you are on the Excel or you are um, on the control. So no influence on the sink levels. Here we have uh, the um, tested for the, the copper levels, and again we can see uh, uh, all the figures. They are on the same level. So um, so the exlit do not um, affect any of the micro elements. It has also been tested for uh, for manganese and tested for selenium, and uh, again it's the same conclusion that exlit do not influence uh, these levels. So the conclusion from these, um, the first um, um, trials from, from Copenhagen is that we have increased the, the calcium at carving. We actually increased it for, uh, from about 1.8 to about 2.2, so an increase of about uh, 0.4. Uh, we take the phosphorus down before and at carving and um, the phosphor level will come down to, to a level lower than one, maybe um, between um, 0 0.5 and, um, and one, and that's very good. Uh, no effect on micro elements, and we can, uh, um, we can con con conclude that we have activated the calcium phosphor homeostasis. So the next step is to look uh, more into um, more blood work and also how uh, how that is associated with some um, production traits. This um, um, slide is from a, a trial uh, performed in Cornell for a few years ago. Um, uh, so that is uh, one of the most recent studies we have um, on, on the exolid. And it was performed on a, on a very high yielding uh, groups of, uh, of, uh, of cows. Um, and what we, what we saw here was again, um, higher calcium level at calving. Actually you see here also, uh, we have here about 2.2 for the XL group, whereas the control group, they were on this level on 1.8. So again, an increase on about 0.4. That's an enormous increase uh, because we know that uh, it's ex a huge difference in performance if you are on 2.2 than 1.8. In this uh, trial, they also found that the, the calcium level was slightly higher in the dry period, and that was not um, observed before. Um, what impact that have, uh, we do not really know. The most important thing is here after carving, you can see you are on a very nice level uh, compared to the control where you are much lower and you can also see that it actually takes them uh, a week uh, or uh, before the control group again is up on the correct level. And we know that the longer time it takes for the calcium to come back on normal, well the um, more negative impact it have on other things. Um, phosphorus, again, the same picture. The control group are here on around 1.5 and the exolid took the, uh, the phosphorus down here on about uh, 0.7, 0.8. Um, so uh, 
again, the phosphorus was going down and it is a very good indicator also if uh, if the um, if the the product has been used um, correct and that all cows have been uh, given given the product um, and how does that then influence on production traits um, in this um, in this experiment um, they looked also into the milk yield here we have presented the energy corrected milk. First of all, you can see that uh, it's on, on very high yielding cows, starting up with more than 50 kilograms of milk. The X lit is the red column, which uh, had a, a slightly diff, uh, lower uh, milk yield here in the first week, but then at the second and, and third um, and fourth week, uh, it was actually higher. The reason for the higher energy corrected milk is a higher um, fat percentage, um, as there was no difference really in, in the kilogram of, uh, of total milk. Um, but this one kilogram of milk is what we observe uh, many places in, in, in practice also, and is what uh, that can be expected. Uh, they also tested the, the colostrum yield and concentration of immunoglobulins. Um, and the colostrum yield is actually um, is likely less when you're using the, the egg salad. Um, that's also what we hear from, 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 from practice. But we also know that the immunoglobulin, the concentration of that is increased. And that's also what we see on, the, um, on this slide. Um, and we hear that from practice, uh, in practice also, as many farmers, they are using the, um, uh, the, the BRICS values uh, and when they control the, the colostrum. Um, and usually they find an increase in the, in the, in the BRICS values as well. On this slide, we see the, the rumination. Um, here in the dry period, there is um, an, an slightly a decrease in a decrease in rumination. It's about uh, four percent here. But as soon as we come uh, after calving, we can see that it's uh, the opposite pattern. So here we can see that it's it's the excel group which having uh, the highest rumination. And especially here in the first week, it's where we, uh, it was observed that the biggest difference. Um, and I, I suppose it's because the cows on exolid, as they are more, uh, have a more uh, stable calcium around calving, well, they're just more fresh just after calving. That's also why we hear that they are uh, faster to get up again. They are faster to start eating and, and um, also start to, uh, faster to start uh, rumination. And that's what we uh, see on these figures really. Here we see the, the feed intake. Um, the feed intake was slightly uh, less here in, in the dry period, where also the rumination was slightly decreased. Again, as soon as we come to uh, after calving, it's, a, it's the opposite pattern. So here we see that, um, that is especially here in the, in the first, first week, there was a, uh, one kilogram extra feed intake for the excellent group compared to the control. Um, um, but across this, uh, the, the whole period, uh, it was slightly more, but, but about a half a kilo on, on, on average. Um, but again, just after calving, well, then you will see the, the, the effect here. Here we see the, um, how the exhalate um, affect the fertility. Um, on this figure here, we have the days in milk on the x-axis, and we have the survival. Um, no, yeah, the what's the proportion of cows non-pregnant here on on the y-axis. So here, when it's 100%, that means that 100% of the animals are non-pregnant; they empty. And what is happening? It is here in the first two months, all cows. Um, are empty. None of them are pregnant. When we come here to around uh, 
um, after 60 days, when we can see they start to, to get drained. And again, the, the X lid is here the red color and the control is, uh, is, is, um, is uh, the blue one. And if you go uh, into the level um, where we can, where 50% of the animals are pregnant, we can see that that is happening at day 70 for the excellent group, and that's happening at day 89 for the control group. So in, in this case, there was a 19 uh, days difference in, in empty days. Um, and then that, that's a, a huge response found in this, um, in this trial. So that's one thing that's interesting. Another thing is uh, uh, if you go here to day 150, here we can see that uh, on the excellent group, only 10% of the cow is not, not pregnant, but still about 30% of the cows in the control group is not pregnant. And often cows not pregnant in at the at day 150, well, they probably not uh, get into the next lactation. So uh, this value here might actually be more interesting economically than the values up here. Um, well, there was also uh, looked into the reproduction on, um, on a trial from New, New Zealand. Uh, here the manage was completely different as we have here uh, cows uh, on pasture. Um, so the cows were out uh, on grass and then they were individually uh, supplemented with an um, exolid that was mixed together with some um, maize silage and given daily. Here, first we see on, in, on the, the, the blood work, um, the lab, lab, um, in the control group, there was about 23% of the cows having subclinical hypercalcemia, for the exit group, zero. For the control group, uh, about 3% um, uh, had hypercalcemia, and again for the excellent group, none uh, was observed at all. So really nice blood work. But what they were more interested in was actually um, the reproduction. And uh, they concluded that Exlit became pregnant two weeks earlier compared to the control relative to the start of the seasonal mating. Um, and that is very um, important when you practice um, seasonal calving. And again, it's a very, um, it also confirmed uh, the, the trials uh, uh, done at Cornell. So no doubt that we can, um, that that will have an impact on the reproduction. Another example um, of excellent here is from um, Australia. It's um, on one farm, uh, automatic milking. Uh, here we have the, the blood work again, and we can see that uh, here it's compared with the uh, with the biochlor. Um, yeah, so, um, we see that the biochlor they have a, a lower level of uh, uh, calcium around calving compared to the excellent. Um, anyway, still the biochlor was working uh, quite well in this case. So they, the, the average value were at, um, at more than uh, the 2.1 2. 2. Um, for, for this treatment as well. But still there was a difference. So difference is uh, from this uh, point two to um, uh, uh, 2.2 to 2.4 is still a huge response. And it's, um, so, so there still is an, a major difference in the calcium levels compared to that treatment. Here we have the, the phosphorus, phosphorus levels, and as we see, excellent, lower. I would actually have preferred them to be lower than these values, um, but still, there's um, much lower compared to, to the to the biochlor, which is the control here in this in this experiment. And uh, what they uh, what they found was um, on the production traits, 
was that we had a higher um, um, kilogram of milk solids, which is the sum of the, the fat and the protein. And we can see that the response was immediately after calving. Uh, it was higher and then it maintained actually uh, this higher level of milk solid in the whole uh, period it was measured, which was in, in, in this case, it was uh, 82 days. So very fast response, which is maintained the whole period. That's very interesting also. They also looked into the, the rumination. And again, we can see that we have the response from the very start and then uh, kind of maintain it uh, the whole period here. It's about 10% higher, the rumination compared to the, to the control. And I think that, uh, well, these two uh, slides just also demonstrate that it's so important to, uh, to start up well. And if you start up well, well, you might have uh, the chance really to, to main, uh, maintain this difference into, um, in a very, very long period. Here's a, a, another example uh, from a herd in, in Hungary. Um, again, blood work, calcium uh, level was high uh, compared to the control. Here we, we look into the day uh, zero and three as the most important. The phosphorus level coming down. Here the average was about uh, one for the Excel group. It's good. If it's been lower, it would not have been any problem. And here was the, is the response on the production traits. We can see they are they were on high levels of uh, different diseases, um, and um, well, basically they found an, an um, improvement in both the metritis, retained placenta mastitis, and also the milk yield. Uh, they found about one kilogram of more milk. Um, in in this example, it was uh, the milk yield was tested on the um, was taken from the first test day uh, milk yield, which were on the average here on that day 23, so about one kilogram more milk. Uh, well, just a repetition of the difference of the excellent to the annual excel here on the plot work. We have seen this. Um, with the excellent going from 1.8 to, uh, uh, to about uh, 2.0. And if you compare that uh, to the uh, anionic salt, um, it's a from a different experiment, but uh, it's also done at the Cornell University just a few years earlier. So it, it's basically the same management and cows we can expect. Uh, last time we also went into this uh, figure of anionic salt and we can see that they are basically all going down uh, in calcium levels here around calving. Um, but uh, the one with the, with the lowest anionic salt level is responding fast, it's coming up faster than the other. So anionic salt, you have a dip and it's all about coming fast up again, but on the exhalate, well, you are on the, in the high level um, from the very start. And the difference in, in um, in phosphorus, we know that the exhalate is taking the, um, the phosphorus down. Here again from the Cornell trials, it's taking it uh, lower than, than one. If you are on the anionic salt, there's no difference in uh, phosphorus levels in the dry period. And after calving, they will more or less be on the same level as this um, one and a half. So, Excellent effect phosphorus, anionic salt have a less effect. There is some, some slight difference in here. Actually, we see that the, the, the group um, having the lowest, uh, the lowest decap value, which are performing the best, have the lowest level of phosphorus compared to the control, having a higher level of phosphorus. So there might also here within the anionic salt be some differences and um, effect of the, of the phosphor in regarding to, to the plasma levels. Um, here we do have the, the feed options. Excellent is um, 
is this product with this gray uh, color, which is um, a mix of the active component with the wheat starts. Um, the, the typical uh, excellent product is this one which come in, in, in granulate. Uh, and recently we now started up with this with the excellent crunched a milk product. Um, um, which have a um, much lower uh, granulate size, uh, so it's um, it works very well if you want to mix uh, your minerals together with the, with excellent, and also it might be easier to use it in your ration, so um, so the cow not is able to sort so to sort it out. Then the excellent also exists in in various uh, compound. Um, and often the, um, it's a compound where the excellent is about uh, 20 or 25 percent, and then the rest is often some starch uh, and some protein. Um, so the palatability uh, is slightly better here when you have when you, when you use a, a compound. Um, and then it's also a solution which works very well if you um, have one mix of. Uh, uh, one mix for the whole dry period, um, then uh, you add this uh, excellent uh, the compound on top for the for the close up, and then you have um, both included the excellent. You have also included more uh, protein, and you have increased the energy, uh, and that is um, a very very good combination. When you feed uh, the product. Um, the thing is that um, the, um, depending, depending on the size of, of the herd, um, there's of course also very different um, the number of cows in this close-up group. And in many places, the size of this close-up group is so small that there's not a, a specific um, mix is used for that group. They might be using the, the same group, the same feed for the whole dry period. And that's actually what's um, um, happening in here, where we can see here the, the, the rough fit is the same. They use for the, the far off as a close up, and then they have here a mix consisting of the excellent together with some uh, wheat, and they uh, put that on the top. So that can work, but they should have mixed it better also here with um, together with the with the rough edge. Um, because here we can see the cow have the possibility to sort um, some some my sort some may not we do not know if that cow and that cow have eaten exactly the same ration um, and exactly the same uh, picture here, uh, the, the, the same situation this, uh, on this farm, that is a situation we should avoid. Uh, you should not put it on the top. We need to do um, a mixing of it. So we are sure that all cows will have the same ration at, and we are sure that all cows uh, will have um, the correct amount of excellent. Then another uh, uh, option is to, um, to to put it in the, the TMR, and that uh, is uh, the very best um, option. Well, the very best is if you uh, have a, a proper ration uh, for the close-up group and you build it up from the very ground, um, and, and together with the excellent. Um, in this here example, um, here they are giving the the close-up. The far off group, the rash, um, a mix here, and then he add the excellent for the, the close up group. He actually go up and, and include it in the mixer wagon. And it works in this place, but we just need to be aware that in, when he puts it in here in the front of the mix, mixer wagon, there's still a long way to the back of the mixer wagon. Here we look into it. So here he puts it in here in the very front, it's the long way. Uh, to mix it with the feed here in the very back. So um, it works in this case uh, when the mixing time is long enough. But we also know in practice that it's very important that you go up 
and look into the mixer back and, and see um, how it is it, it is uh, it's mixed. Um, we know that if, from some um, mixes, uh, it's actually better than uh, you will include the exit from in, in the middle compared to the very front. But it depends on, on, on the mix of vacants, um, how they are constructed. But um, it can't be a, 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 a problem uh, to, to mix this probably uh, in, um, in, in a mix of wagon because it's, uh, as we also we see here, it's a very, very low amount of mixing material uh, and the, um, this um, vacuum works much better when it's on a much higher level. So be aware of that. The feed recommendation. Well, we uh, recommend that um, from going from the far off to the close off, first of all, it's good to have a, um, an increase in, in, in energy. Here's the energy is um, um, expressed as uh, the values we use here in the NORFO, and I am very aware that uh, it depends very much on your system, uh, how that is ex expressed. But the message is, is, well, it's good to have an improvement in energy, 10 15% uh, going from the far off to the close off. We recommend um, a, a protein level uh, 14 15%. On the phosphorus level, um, around three or lower, um, you should not really add any uh, mineral phosphor to this group. Um, often you'll be around this level just uh, from the protein, from, from the, the from the phosphorus in the feed. Uh, nothing added. On the calcium, um, well, you do not really need to add anything. Often you'll be around uh, 0 0.4, 0 0.3, uh, 0 0.4 on, on the natural level, um, but we recommend that you keep it lower than 0 0.7. Using the exolate, uh, we are not really that um, afraid of the potassium. Potassium is very, very important when you uh, are f using the anionic um, uh, acid strategy, uh, and you should always try to keep that um, as low as possible. But um, in, um, in, in our system here, well, it's not really that uh, important. So uh, you can hear uh, easily uh, feed with a green material. You can uh, with fresh grass or uh, clover grass, uh, silates, uh, having high content of potassium, and there will not be any problem. Um, but again, sorting mixing. Be aware that all cows are um, are having the same ration, that they all have eaten been eating the material. Here's just an example from um, from from practice also. Um, uh, how how they, um, they 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 feed it. Uh, they have the far off here, and going from the far off to the close off. Well, they add uh, one kilogram more barley, uh, more soya, and the exolid. So here we have increased the energy, we have increased the uh, the protein level, and we have uh, fixed uh, uh, the calcium level with the exolid. So. With this high level of energy, protein, and with the correct level of uh, calcium at carving, well, then you have very, very good uh, probability that the cow will um, start up very well. Summing up, um, yes, uh, the effect of excellent is easily observed in the blood calcium values. Um, high blood calcium is the final goal and is the very um, is the first one uh, to look for if you go uh, into this blood work. Um, if you want to uh, use this on, on, on the farm, we recommend to take about uh, five to eight samples uh, of, uh, of ultra uh, cows to see what level are you in. And then you could, if you change to the exolid, take uh, another five, 10 samples uh, and then see the difference. Then you can easily 
uh, see there will be a response. As we have seen, phosphorus is also very interesting. And I also, when I look into the blood work, I look very much into the phosphorus as, as well, because that is uh, the way you can, um, you can see if they have been given correct, because all cows should have a lower level of phosphorus. If there's some cows having high level of phosphorus, I can very uh, sure conclude, well, this cow has not been given the correct amount of the exhalate because it's a, it is a very clear effect that giving uh, the exhalate is decreasing the, the phosphorus level. And then the first thing is to look how is the manage, has there been any sorting, uh, has, uh, has been given the correct uh, amount. So higher calcium level is uh, observed and we have also seen that uh, um, how it affects the different production parameters, more milk, uh, less diseases, high feed intake, rumination. Rumination, I think, is a very, very um, a, a good production parameter. Um, um, there's a lot of farms uh, which are able to, to measure that. Um, and um, I, I believe that looking into the rumination uh, just after calving, is a very, very uh, good way, good indicator of how well the cows have started up. Um, you'll find better reproducing and altogether less reason for calling. You will have more um, cows coming to the next, coming to the next lactation and having increased lifetime performance. Lastly, I can tell you that um, um, two university trials on uh, Exolit have uh, been concluded in the United States, one of, on, uh, in Wisconsin and one in, in, in Kansas. Um, and uh, we will very soon um, uh, be able to present the results from these two studies. Uh, here, the Exolit is in both cases uh, compared to the anionic salt, and it's done on a, on a higher level of animals. So, um, more information and uh, research uh, to come very soon. And um, that brings me to the end of the of uh, the presentation. Um, and you are free to ask any question. Thank you very much, Pierre. Uh, we have we have several questions here, so let's uh, try to to answer them. Uh, the first question is: What is the minimum number of days you need to feed Exolid for it to work to its full potential? Our experience from um, from practice is that um, around ten days. But yes. you just need to be aware that, um, um, well, there will always be variation in in um, in uh, how exactly you can um, you you can you can say when the cow is calving. So that's also why that we recommend for uh, two weeks, as some cows will properly uh, give birth to the calf a week before you uh, expect it. Uh, and then there will be too many um, having too few days, but about 10 days can also work. Yes. Next question. Exolid binds calcium and phosphorus. If we have a lower level of blood phosphorus at calving, will, the co will this cause problems? What level of blood phosphorus is targeted? Uh, minimum questionary. Yes, that's a very good question. Yeah. Um, well, there's a, a big variation on farms on, on the, the dietary level of uh, phosphorus and calcium and also on, on, in, on, on, on the feed intake um, in the dry period. So, um, of, um, of course, there can be good arguments that the, uh, also the supplementation rate could be different uh, due to how much calcium and phosphor there is uh, in the ration. Um, our recommendation is, is 500 grams per cow per day, which is something work across uh, a big variation 
of feed ration and a big variation of manage management level. But if you are on a very low level of calcium and phosphorus, well, it's a good argument that actually you could feed with less. But we recommend start always up with the 500 grams, then uh, so you're sure you can see uh, the effect of the product and getting con convinced that it has an, an effect. But you can go into uh, more into the blood work and um, and follow the, the 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 cows more tight. And I always recommend that the the the, the first should be lower than one, a lower, um, and I have no problems. They going further down. Uh, 0 0.7, 0 0.5, we see that uh, that works very, very well. Uh, so uh, you should not be afraid of uh, of low um, uh, phosphorus value. What effects does the delay in achieving good calcium status have on the cow soon after calving? Well, we know that um, that um, well, as soon as she, she is low in calcium, well, it have a negative impact on on so many things. As a, um, um, as as the calcium is important for all muscle contractions, and we know that basically most of the, the things happening in in the body, if it's a feed intake, rumination, uh, um, yeah, giving birth to the calf, whatever thing, you need muscle power. Um, and we also know that um, the longer period you are down in 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 first not get calcium, well, more negative impact it will have on on the production um, on the production and and the reproduction. So um, it's actually very one way uh, that higher calcium level is always better. Is there a chance that high phosphorus forage or water will reduce the effect of exhalate? Well, that's a good question also. Um, um, well, in practice, we, we, uh, if, you not, if you do not add any, any force, you will often be on this 0.3, 0.4. Um, uh, but we also see rations where you are up on let's say 0.5 or 0.6 you will put the thing is when you are on a higher level of force you probably have more bigger problem so the you will see a, a huge effect um, even you are having a high uh, level also but the best effect uh, you will get if you also take the the phosphorus down Okay, next one. In the experiment of curving it at all uh, from 19, was the control group fed on DCAT diet or not? The control group uh, was fed on, a, um, uh, had a DCAT value on uh, 180 milli equivalent per kilogram dry matter. So it was not um, um, an anionic salt, it was control. Could you please explain the mechanism of binding, which is selective to calcium? Um, uh, well, I do not fully understand that question, but the, but the but the excellent bind the uh, the calcium in the feed. So that's also it's, it's where it's, it uh, this product also differs from the other solution. Um, the the mode of action is in the feed in in, uh, in in the the digestive tract. There's nothing really that need to be absorbed. So when you give the exhalate, it capture the uh, calcium and the phosph in the feed, so it's no longer uh, available for absorption. Um, and when you when it's no longer available for absorption, less will go into the cow, and the cow will then start its own defense mechanism for having low calcium and low fuss. Next one, can you explain why low phosphorus values before calving is good? It's also a very, very good question. Um, actually, we, we have known in many years that low, low phosphorus is, um, is good. 
Um, recently, there has also been um, a lot of focus on it uh, in, in, a, in a review um, on anionic salt. And it's um, if you, even you use anionic salt strategy, well, you should uh, keep the phosphor level uh, down. It's also been shown in um, in, in trials for having high level, uh, high level and low level of phosphorus, that if you keep the low level down in the, in the dry period, well, you also have um, um, better starting cows um, with high calcium level. And it seems like that on the phos, uh, there's also some uh, mechanism uh, by itself. Uh, earlier, it was more believed that it was um, that the cow controlled the calcium. Uh, and was because it's very homeostatic regulated and that, and that there not were any regulation mechanism for the phosphorus but it seems uh, like there's also some regulation mechanism for the phosphor also yes thank you did the diet in the Cornell study have low calcium level or normal calcium levels they were on on, on on normal level, both for the calcium and the phos. As I remembered, they were on uh, point, uh, 0.4 on phos and um, 0 0.5 on, on, on calcium level. Um, so actually they are they were on uh, a bit higher level on um, on both calcium and phosphor as we, we, we usually see, uh, but not uh, not that extreme more, more, more different. Um, and on the same time, the um, the feed intake was also very high, so they were uh, eating about 12 to, to 14 kilogram dry matter in in um, in the last part of lactation. So um, yeah, so that of course there have been a lot of uh, calcium and, and phosphor in in that ration. The trial showed an improvement of 19 days to conception. Has this been replicated or is is it the norm for an improvement in conception? If so, what is the average days saved? Well, it's a very good question. Um, there is so far done a uh, few works on, um, on the reproduction regarding the egg salad. Uh, well, we have this uh, indication from Cornell. It was not significant, but the tendency is very clear. And we also have, uh, we saw the same pattern on um, in New Zealand. And again, I think it was a very clear tendency uh, uh, for the effect. And the size of the effect was in this uh, trial also about these uh, two weeks. But I think it will be a big variation in how much respond you will see on on reproduction as it also is um, affected with a lot of other component but still on its own there is uh, also a lot of good studies uh, demonstrating uh, the relationship between the calcium level and uh, reproduction uh, with on studies done um, without the egg salad so this relationship between the calcium level and reproduction has been observed earlier, but there's a big variation in the, the, the associations. But, but the direction is clear that you will find a positive effect. What was the percentage increase in milk solids in the BioClaw trial? Um, in that trial, the, the response was very high. Um, actually, I think it was about 10% in, in the milk solid. Um, and that response uh, is higher than we normally see. Usually, I will say that and response on one kilogram of milk uh, should be expected. And that, that is within the, the normal range. Does exolate affect magnesium abs absorption? Um, yes, uh, the exolytes uh, capture also small uh, amount of, um, of of magnesium, and we we know that the after calving the magnesium is slightly lower than the control groups, but.
But if that is due to low, uh, to lower uh, absorption or not, I do not know because we also know that um, that there's a relationship between the calcium level and the magnesium. Um, so, uh, so normally we see that if you have low level of calcium uh, just after carving, then you also have high level of magnesium. How important is the 500 gram feed rate? If I only feed 400 grams, what would be the effect? Well, that's a very good question. Uh, and again, uh, th this uh, 500 gram is a level that works very well across a lot of different rations. Um, they are, uh, that's a lot of farmer. Uh, playing around with with this uh, doses as well, and some of them they go down to 400 gram, but usually they stick to around to 500 gram because as soon as you, the first uh, thing they they observe in going down is uh, is often on the on the ketosis, uh, so um, so if you are on on lower amount, well you will you will uh, of course get a lot of the effect of it. But um, but we also know that um, that the calcium level is very sensitive. So so if you feed a lower lower level of it, well, you'll probably have uh, more hypercalcemia. And then the question is just how in how much impact does it have on on your production parameter? So uh, in practice. Um, um, farms they run with the 500 grams and that's also our recommendation why is the here is written k it must be calcium level not important when using exolid well it's because um uh, the exolid is not uh, making an metabolic acidosis um potassium have a high influence on, um, and on on acidifying the the blood, so if you have a high level of, of uh, potassium in 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 the feed, it uh, can be very very difficult to uh, obtain low um, low um, urine pH. So that's why it's always is avoided. But here on the Excel, it we are it it, it work on a complete uh, different way. Um, um, we know from the, the pH uh, measurement in the urine that in the, the excellent have no impact um, on on on, um, on the pH. So uh, they will usually be about uh, higher than eight. Whereas when you do the, the annual feed uh, uh, strategy, then you will often aim at going down to six, six and a half in pH. How do we best measure rumination after calving? Uh, well, you need to have a special device for that. Um, um, and um, I know that, well, it's um, it's getting more and more common, or uh, it's at least a lot of places uh, they have it. Uh, um, but you need a special device for that. Okay. Two more questions. The first one, what is the first thing you look for on a farm to prove to customer it's working? Reproduction data, milk fevers, yield? Well, that's a good question also. Um, well, we know that it, it works very uh, directly on, on, on the hypercalcemia and, and, and milk fever. In practice, the, the uh, the hyper, uh, the, the subclinic hypercalcemia, well, that can be difficult to observe. So it's, we more look into the indirect parameter, uh, and I'll say the first parameter is uh, ketosis, uh, retained placenta, um, and metritis. Uh, you will also find more milk, but that can in practice be very, very difficult to, to, to measure. Uh, but um, diseases, diseases incidence um, is a good choice. And the last one, you talked about uh, changing the feed formula. If you don't change it, how are the results? Um, yes, you need to, to make a proper ration for, for the um, um, for the close up group. 
um, so you have uh, so you do a recalculation of all the the, the feed parameter. Uh, you should not just put it on top on on the on the far off uh, ration because then you'll be too low in energy. You'll be too low in in protein. Um, so um, recalculate the, the close up group ration. Yes, thank you very much, Pierre, for answering all uh, the questions. Thanking, thanks for putting all the questions to us. We appreciate that. That's a part of a good dialogue and to go deeper into the topic. So now it's nearly time to finalize the meeting. And uh, it's our hope that the webinar has contributed with knowledge and uh, insight into the topic transition cow management. From our side, more webinars will come. The first one would be uh, the 8th of uh, April concerning how to reduce spoilage in feed ration. And then the second one would be the 22 of, uh, uh, 22nd of April concerning how heat stress impacts the performance of pigs and how to prevent. So keep an eye on our website and show me platforms where the invitation soon will show up. Thank you again very much for participating today. Hope to see you again. Goodbye.